this case of study, we will introduce the concepts of location, entities, entity arrivals, processes, and routings for customers that come to a barber shop. This is the neighborhood barber shop, Fantastic Dan, for haircuts. So the problem is that the customer arrive one by one to the waiting area and they are exponentially distributed with an average of 10 minutes. And the barber then takes about between eight to 10 minutes, depending on the amount of gossip he has to share with the customer and is uniformly distributed. So that means that the mean and have the width of nine minutes and one minute respectively for each haircut. So this time also includes the initial greetings and the transaction for paying for the haircut and the end of the haircut. The simulation runs, the simulation model runs for one day, which is equivalent to eight hours or 480 minutes. So in this case study, we need to find out the following questions is how many customers does Dan process each day? What is the average number of customers waiting to get the haircut? What is the maximum number of customers waiting to get a haircut? And what is the average time spent by a customer in the salon? So, and at the end also, we need to find out what is the utilization of the barber. When we create a new model, we will start with the locations, entities, arrivals, and processing. This is called the leap. So if we start with the locations is where the action happens, right? This is the first menu that we'd start. And here you'll find, this is like a, a Excel sheet where you track the different number of locations that you have in your model. For this particular model, we have what is called a waiting area, right? That's where the customers arrive. And we will start with our different symbols that are here. You can see if you click on this icon, you have lathes, you have inspect, drill presses, press brakes, bond saws, and different items. You can even have a pallet here. So these are icons that represent the symbols of the locations that you'll be working. Obviously, this is a not a manufacturing area. It's more of a service area. Since we don't have an icon here for a waiting area, we're going to utilize here a region. So we click on the region. And as you click on the region, there's a plus sign that comes into the layout. And then you pretty much with your pointer, you create a location symbol of a region, which is a square in this case. There you go. And as you click, you can point it here and click it here in the layout. And you create what is called a region location. In this case, the region location, the icon is a square. And then you have the name so what I'm going to do is change the name of location one to waiting area. And when you enter this in pro model, you try to put an underscore for any spaces. So now I have a waiting area and it looks like in the process, I also have another location where the service happens. So in this case, the barber. So what I want to do here is, let's say, where is my barber? Okay, there's a worker here and another worker here. I'm going to select this worker. Again, just point here on the icon and when you go to the layout, it turns into a insertion of a new location. So I'm going to select it here. Since it's a very small square, you can also size up 
to make it bigger and there you go so I have created what is called my two locations my waiting area and and my barber but in this case my barber is actually a worker so I can change it here now to barber okay so for this problem it only takes about two locations and let's talk about the waiting area the waiting area is pretty much what I have lots of clients coming to the barber shop so it's a symbol that people will come here and stay here and what I'm going to do is actually change the capacity in this case to infinite because I can have infinite number of different client customers coming at the same time okay now it has says units if I have two different waiting areas let's say you are doing this for a hospital and they have the a waiting area for the emergency room and the another waiting area for the urgent care then you place two different units in this case okay but for the sake of this I'm just going to use one unit all of these downtime statistic rules and notes we're going to use them as we work on other uh, other cases so <clears throat> now for the barber for the barber let's say uh, what is the capacity that they can process at the same time in this case I can process only about one person at a time so I'm gonna give it a default of one okay so this is pretty much what I need to select on creating allocations. If you have a manufacturing process that have, let's say, five different steps, then you can come back and create more locations. But this is just a simple case study for a one barber in one uh, barber shop. Let's say you have different barbers here, then you can create locations for Dan, for Mary, for John, and different locations for different barbers okay another thing that I'm going to do is since I don't know pretty much when I see the layout I don't know which one is which so I'm going to create what is called the text how do I add the text to my locations so let's say I'm in the waiting area so instead of creating a new location I'm going to select the text select the text and then I put it here inside my region and then bring it down and this is the waiting area as you can see there's no a space in B there's no an underscore the underscore is here and then I'm going to also put the name of the barber so I uh, make sure that you have your new box or create new locations is unchecked otherwise it creates a new a new location so in this case I'm just going to uncheck again make sure that it's in check and assign the name to this barber location okay. this is barber All right so again that's it guys I'm done with my creative locations now I'm gonna go to leap location the next is entities so let's go to the entities Okay, the entities are pretty much the items that are going to get processed in this barbershop. Okay, now for the sake for the sake of this for the sake of this model, uh, you bring the entities. The entities may be people, may be raw material. In the case of a manufacturing maybe information maybe emails you name it so entities are the things that need to be processed at each location for my case i'm going to select customers right there's machinists workers so you can bring any type of i want to select a a uh, machinist but in this case i'm going to change the name to customer And then you have here the 
this icon that you can uh, make it bigger or make it smaller. So when you're running the simulation, you actually seeing the customer coming to the waiting area and then going to the next step, which is going to the barber to have the haircut. Now, in this case, for the entities, they have a speed and feet per minute for 150. So you leave this alone. So later we will discuss how these uh, numbers can be helpful. Stats and notes, you can leave them alone for the time being. You learn that at later, later models. But as of now, I have just created my, my customers, right? So now let's go to inter arrival times. I'm going to erase all this information that I previously had here. So the arrivals is pretty much is the first step of the process is when the materials arrive, when the customers arrive. In this case, it shows here how many entities you have created and looks like I have only customers. So you can select the entity here as the customer, press OK. The location that it arrives is in the waiting area. So it's already highlighted here. So all I have to do is to press OK. And then it's asking me what is the quantity that I need to use to for this process. So the quantity that they arrive it says one by one in the problem statement, they arrive to the waiting area. So guess what? The quantity is one, right? Now, if all of a sudden you're dealing, let's say, with a, uh, uh, you're going to the airport, right? And all of a sudden the arrivals is coming with a taxi, where there's four people in the taxi that arrive to the airport then this quantity will be four if you're tracking number of customers arriving from the taxi, right? But in this case, or if you find a bus that drops uh, travelers to the air airport, then you write the number of people in the bus. In this case, we can assume that we have people coming to the waiting area one at a time. And then the first time, what it means is the first time when they open the shop, right? It starts zero. So I'm gonna put here as the time as zero. You can use this, you can put a calendar date. Let's say that this shop open only on Mondays to Saturdays, right? You can put a, a specific weekly time, right? And do not pay attention to this. This is just the offset if uh, special arrivals come into the locations. But for just for the time being, the time only is going to be zero because let's say the schedule is eight hours. So they we expect that these people arrive when the barber shop opens in the morning. All right. So we're going to call it zero. And then this is the occurrences. Okay. The occurrence is about how many customers, right? How many occurrences am I going to have during the day? Since I don't know, in this case, how many customers they're going to come to the shop, I'm going to put infinite. I and F. Infinite occurrences. Now, sometimes there's in the manufacturing there's certain areas that are already known let's say i'm going to bring let's say 100 pieces every five hours during the shift right but in this case for service models like this for a barber shop we don't know the number of customers uh, that they're going to arrive during the day so it's going to be infinite now, the other piece of information that we know is the frequency, right? It is said that these customers come to the barber shop exponentially distributed with an average of 10 minutes. 
So we're going to use the symbol of exponential as e, and then operate the parenthesis, right? And we're going to call it 10 minutes. Okay. Now we have defined the frequency of arrivals of customers based on the distribution is called an exponential dis distribution sometimes you may have the case study said that this is a normal distribution for 10 minutes with a standard deviation of one right but in this case i'm going to do yes a exponential distribution of 10 minutes Right. Now, these minutes, I put here in minutes because in our general information, if I click here, it's a barber shop, the units that I'm dealing are in minutes, right? If these will be the frequency in seconds, then I need to change this minutes to seconds, right? But what if I don't put anything? If I don't put any any time units here, then the default goes into from our general information in minutes. So this is assuming that whatever information related to the time is the default is minutes. Okay. Yes, for the time sake, for the first models that we're going to build, is going to specify the frequency unit. Now, here is entities you may have like children, you may have like uh, elderly people that may have a discount, or you never know, but you may have different types of customers arriving to the to the barber shop. For for this sake, it's just going to be customer. So I'm done with my locations, entities, arrivals, right? Now, let me just show you a different way. I'm going to erase this again, right? And I'm going to show you a faster way to enter this information. So what the first method that we use was the selection from the drop down menu, right? But there's another way that you can enter your information is the point and click. So I click, I point on my customer. I mention that my customer arrives to the waiting area and puts the information by itself. Okay, this puts the location. So automatically puts this information. Obviously, the only thing that it doesn't happen is every minute right so this is the only thing that i need to change to exponential 10 minutes and is since when you build models that have multiple lo location instead of writing and using the drop down menu from each column you can easily just point and click directly to the area Okay, so now you know, you learn the two different methods for entering data using the drop down menus or using the point and click. So now I'm going to go to my next step, which is the processing. Okay, so I have my processing. Looks like I have some information in here I'm going to erase. So in this case, the processing indicates now that the customer, and look at what happened here. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to create what's called the routing. How am I going to, is the routing of the process, the process flow. The process flow is that I have customers, right? That come into a waiting area and then there's an operation, right? What kind of operation I'm gonna take? And then what is the next step? It's called the routing, right?
is the destination. So all of this, this is what we want to do in our processing is just dictate what is the flow of this customer. So I'm going to use the method, what is called the drop down method um, menu, drop down to enter this information. So I'm going to use customer that arrives at that location is a waiting area. Then the operation, the operation is actually shows up here too. I don't do anything with this customer. So when they come, they just hang out in this area, right? So in this case, there's no operation either. They just come and wait. So they're dependent. The amount of wait time is dependent on the barber. So the barber is the one that controls the waiting time. So then the next step is now that customers arrive to the waiting area, what is the next step? Well, once the barber is free to work on my haircut, then the output is going to be a customer. And the destination is going to be a barber, right? Because actually, when the barber is free, right, now is my turn, right? Then I go to the barber. Well, this is what is called the flow, the routing, right? In this case, there's a rule for first and move logic. This is just the amount of time that it takes to move. So we don't want to use any, any information as of now. We're just going to assume that the move time is negligible. All right. So I'm going to create now a second entry of the entity, which is a customer. Is right now in the location of the barber. So I'm going to select drop down menu for location, select barber. And then in the operation is how long it takes to process a customer that goes to the barber. So I have two ways to enter this information. I can go either directly here with a wait statement, or I can put it right here in the wait statement as well. So either or. Now, before I put the amount of time, I'm going to put some notes here. I'm going to put an apostrophe to put some notes. So remember, in the description of the problem, it says that takes anywhere from 8 to 10 minutes. So immediately, when they give you a range or when you do an interview, let's say you're going to interview the barber. Hey, how long it takes to do a haircut? And the answer is it takes anywhere from 8 to 10 minutes. So immediately, you're going to find that this is a uniform distribution, right? Where you take your mean and you take also half the spread. So that's the formula. Your mean is actually the lowest number and the highest number divided by two, right? And half the width is actually B minus A divided by two. So that's one quick way to calculate how long it's going to take or what's going to be the parameters for the distribution. Remember, you need to translate your observation into pro model uh, terms. So in this case, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to put here, so it's going to be 8 plus 10 divided by 2, and it's going to be B, which is 10 minus 8 divided by 2. So those are my parameters that I want to put here in pro model, right? Oops, I had here a 8. So these are going to be my formulas that I'm going to use for my uniform distribution, okay? So again, if I substitute the values, it's going to be uh, u and it's going to be uh, 8 plus 10 is 19 divided by 2. It's going to be 9, comma, and then you have 
10 minus 8 is 2 divided by 2 is going to be 1. So this is again is going to be now the parameter that I need to put in my weight statement. So now uh, let's say I'm going to copy this and paste it here so that you know. Okay. Now for the sake of this example, I'm just going to erase this comment. I can leave it there, but I just to keep it clean, I, at least you know where these numbers are coming from and how to build your distribution, your weight statement. So in ProModel, this is your first command. This is a programming command within ProModel that says weight. So what, what it does, it says wait for this amount of time. So it's holding the customer hostage in this station or the barber for this amount of time. All right. So after I'm done, I have also the opportunity to put here the units of measure of time. So in this case, uh, I don't know if you remember that the general information give us that is minutes, the default. So I can leave it alone. So this immediately per model will assume that is the mean time is nine minutes. But I'm just for the sake of my first the, the demonstration is I'm gonna put the units of measure here. And then the output what's going to come out once I'm done with my haircut, what's going to come out out of this process is the customer. Right. And then there's another destination. I have to go through the door and exit the barbershop. So you select exit. So this is for every single when there's the end of the process, right? You always have to exit your model. Right, so this now I'm able to to uh, finish my two entries for the waiting area and for the barber shop. Now, for the amount of time, you're going to go to the simulation options. I'm going to erase this. So, in the simulation options, says for how long. I might want to run this model for one day and in a barbershop one day is equal to eight hours. So you can put eight hours here. The default of units of measure of time is hours. Okay. So that means that you don't have to put hours here. As long as you put eight, let's say that you're working in a manufacturing where uh, it's a 10 hour shift in a day. So you put 10. You can also run simulation. Let's say you want to run a simulation for a whole week in a manufacturing environment where they never stop. It's a 24 hour, seven day, 168 hours. Okay. So this is just one way to change your runtime in your model. But for the case of the barbershop is one day is equal to eight hours. Okay. So now that you have most of your information, it's time to run the model. So in that case, I'm going to click here, simulate. So in the simulation time, I can slow down my slider here and you see that is 51 minutes, 52. I can also, there's already one customer with a barber. There's no one in the winning area, but guess what? I'm going to speed up the process and the clock is running faster now. And you start to see the arrivals of customers to the waiting area, right? So you also, when you run models that take too much time, you can deactivate the animation and will run even much faster. Let's say you want to run for one month simulation. Uh, you don't need to be staring at the screen and uncheck the animation. Well, guess what? I have now my results here and I want to see the results. All right. So I have now my results, my analytics. 
So I have a scoreboard for the analytics of the model and I have the customer and this telling me how many exits, how many customers exit the barber shop in this case. So that answer pretty much the first question is how many customers does Dan process per day? And the answer is 47, right? Now it also has the information, right? Or what is the average time spent by the customer in the salon? So the waiting, including the waiting, including the haircut, customer spends about 32 minutes, right? And it also gives me the average time that it takes to do a haircut. So remember that the barber gave us a range between eight and 10 minutes, right? So this uh, pro model calculates how, what is the average per customer. Now I can also go uh, to the tables, okay? And have the entity summary. Remember entities are customers. If you're in the manufacturing environment, let's say you're manufacturing wheels, then you click on this to find out about the wheels, or if you go into a building insurance company where they handle information, policies, entities are anything that you process. So I'm gonna just click summary for the entities, and I want to get information about the customer because that's our case, how we can please the customer, right? What are the issues with the customer? So with this pro model simulation, I'm learning what are the issues with the customer? So we have, again, the conclusion that is 47 customers that Dan was able to process. For the case of the business, I can even multiply by the average cost of the haircut, and I can find out how much income goes into the barber shop. Current system that it means that uh, at the end of simulation there was one customer in the barber shop, and then the average time is 32 minutes, meaning is about half an hour. Uh, the average customer stays there, and it says here that the average time in operation, meaning the average time to conduct or haircut is about nine minutes, 8.9. And then this is the block time. The block time, it means is they cannot proceed to the next station, right? Because it's blocked. That means that the, the uh, customer had to wait about this amount of time, right? Now, just make sure that Remember when you see right now is zero, the waiting time, these two is actually the waiting time, okay? When you have a block time and when you have the average time waiting is these two numbers will become the total wait time, right? This is total wait time, right? For the location to become available. And this is once is there, once is the first person that is ready to get the haircut is busy it's because all the people that are in front of you. So total, total wait time. And you have here the amount of time to conduct the haircut. So then this answers the questions that we were, we were uh, having at the beginning of our case study is to find out what is the uh, average time in the waiting area, right? So the answer is this one. Since I don't have anything here, and it's gonna be just the block time. Now, I have another question that was related to the barber. And for the barber, I'm gonna go to the location summary. I went to the entity summary. In this case, I'm gonna go to the location summary. Because they're asking me now questions around the barber. So, questions about the barber is, what is the utilization, right? Utilization is 89%. Another question that the case study, 
So meaning that the, that the barber was working very hard, probably the barber was not taking any breaks. And I know some barbers that sometimes they skip lunch just to take care of the customers. So this was, is pretty good, pretty good. So, but, but now another question is related to the waiting area is what is the average amount of customers, the wait? And the answer is 2.3, right? And what is the amount? What is the amount of, what is the maximum amount of customers the wait is eight. So now it gives me the average it gives me the maximum content, which is come, come, in this case, the maximum customers that are in the waiting area. This is important when you're going to design, let's say a barber shop to see how many seats you need to have available, right? And obviously this is just for one barber, but uh, uh, you'll be able to now uh, use this information for the design of a location spacing and also how well you're satisfying the customers. Because when, when customers start to see too many people in a barber shop, they start to leave, right? So this is all information. These are the analytics of the model that can help us how to optimize the business, right? And how to design even the barber shop. What will be the sizing of the barber shop? All right, guys, so hopefully with this, you were able to answer this information and see you guys in our next case study. Thank you for watching.